In today's session, we will be discussing an important respiratory topic that is bronchial asthma. So the learning objectives of this session, at the end of the session, the student must be able to define what is bronchial asthma, discuss the pathogenesis and risk factors of bronchial asthma, differentiate the common clinical types of asthma, discuss the clinical features of asthma, order specific investigations to diagnose a patient with bronchial asthma and discuss the stepwise management of bronchial asthma and also discuss the management of status asthmaticus. Asthma the guidelines go by the GINA guidelines so most of the treatment modalities that we will be discussing would be based on the latest GINA guidelines. Let us begin with the case scenario. So here we have a 27 year old patient who comes with the breathlessness and cough. She had history of allergic rhinitis and at the age of 6, she has been diagnosed to have mild persistent asthma and allergic rhinitis and is presently on inhaled salmitamol that is 100 micrograms 3 times daily and budesonide 250 milligrams that is their inhaler she is taking twice a day. Her peak flow uh, rate has remained constant around 400 prior to the last 2 months. So that is what is her baseline status that we know. So she has come now with breathlessness and cough. So she is an asthmatic and has allergic rhinitis and she is on inhalers. On examination, she is comfortable. She is speaking complete sentences. The respiratory rate is 15 per minute. Blood pressure is 120-80. Oxygen saturation is 98%. Her weight is 95 kgs. Height is 166 centimeters. So she is obese. Auscultation of the chest shows bilateral expiratory polyphonic V's with vesicular breath sounds. There are no other abnormalities on finding. So when you see this patient has been a diagnosed case of asthma and she has been on treatment for asthma and now she comes with a presentation of increasing breathlessness and cough. So increasing breathlessness and cough. So it is a diagnosed case of asthma now has come with a cough with breathlessness and what do you think it is. So the possibility is an acute exacerbation. That is the diagnosis we could think of, acute exacerbation of bronchial asthma. So that is what we can think of. So how severe is the acute exacerbation that we will have to assess. Now if you see her, she is comfortable at rest, she is speaking full sentences and the respiratory rate is not elevated, the BP is not low, the saturation is maintained. So it is not a severe exacerbation, it is a moderate exacerbation possibly, little difficult to call it as exacerbation because she is comfortable here. So it is just that it is a moderate persistent asthma that is what we can make the diagnosis on. So when you have a patient who is already on medications and now comes with worsening symptoms and she is not very sick, she is not sick, her vitals are stable, saturation is fine but still the asthma is not controlled. So we have to assess what is the reason for her not control. So we have to evaluate her and then we will have to see what is the reason why it is not controlled. So when you check the peak flow uh, meter in her in your clinic that you find that it is 350 ml, the chest x-ray is normal, the complete blood count is normal here, the Ig is elevated, so normal Ig is around less than 100, around 85, so it is 450 Ig levels are elevated. So what you can see is the peak flow which was maintained around 400 prior, now it has dropped, so there is a significant drop, okay. So from 400 it has dropped to 350, so it is a 50 drop, so almost around 15 percent drop of the peak flow meter. So that means there is an obstruction element that is persistent there. Also the Ig is elevated, so these are the things that you can assess. So what is your diagnosis? So this is bronchial asthma definitely because she is on treatment and she has been diagnosed. There is uh, allergic history, so it is an allergic bronchial asthma that you have and it has been there for long, so it is a chronic asthma and it has been persistent, so it is a chronic persistent bronchial asthma. So that is what we can say and uh, she does not have an exacerbation, however she still has symptoms. So we will have to look into it why the symptoms are present and what can we do for that. So as we see here, the Ig is elevated, so there is an allergic element that is there. The chest x-ray is normal, the blood count is normal, so there is no super added infection, there is no pneumothorax or anything else, but there is an allergic element that could be there. So how will you manage this case? Obviously we will have to improve her peak expiratory flow rate because it was at 400, it has come down to 350. So we will have to do something. So either we will have to add some medications or increase the dose of medication. She is on a short acting beta agonist salbutamol. 
we might have to put her on a long acting beta agonist and we may have to increase the steroid or since the IgE is elevated we may have to treat the IgE also and make her bronchial asthma better. So just as she is not a controlled bronchial asthmatic so that is what we will have to do. So in today's session we will be discussing about how do we diagnose asthma and when the patient is an asthmatic remember asthma is a disease which can be controlled with medications it is not like it is a clearable disease it has to be controlled with medication. So what are the things that we monitor when a patient comes with asthma how do you say it is well controlled how do you say it is uncontrolled and when it is uncontrolled what are the evaluations that we do and how do we proceed that is what we are going to discuss in the further slides. So coming on to bronchial asthma I said the global initiative of asthma that is the GINA guidelines that is there the latest one which has come in 2020. The definition of asthma it says that this is a heterogeneous disorder characterized by chronic airway inflammation. So very important the first line of the definition itself says it is an inflammatory disease. It is not a disease which is caused by any other mechanisms other than inflammation of the airways. So the bronchi, the bronchioles, the large airways and the smaller airways are getting inflamed. Now, so it is defined by history of respiratory symptoms of wheeze, shortness of breath, chest tightness and cough which vary over intensity and times together with variable expiratory airflow limitation. So what is the problem? There is inflammation and the inflammation is producing expiratory airflow limitation. So there is an expiratory airflow limitation that is pathognomonic. So it is an obstructive airway disease. So it is an obstructive airway disease because there is a variable expiratory flow limitation and this very important feature that you have to remember asthma is episodic. So there is an episodic nature of this disease and the symptoms vary over time as well as in intensity. What are the symptoms? The wheeze, the shortness of breath, chest tightness and cough. The other important thing that we have to remember about this expiratory airflow limitation is that it is reversible, reversible either spontaneously or with treatment. Now this is a very important thing that we have to remember that this airflow limitation which is there is reversible. In contrast to the other obstructive disease that we have that is COPD, so chronic bronchitis emphysema, here the obstructive element is associated with the destruction there and that is why the disease progresses, it is not reversible. So asthma with medication or sometimes spontaneously is reversible. So that is the most important feature that you have to understand. Chronic inflammatory airway disease caused by multiplicity of the stimulus. There are multiple stimuli that is coming. So they say it is a hyper responsiveness, hyper responsiveness of the airway to a multiplicity of stimuli. So it could be an endogenous stimuli or an exogenous stimuli. So the multiplicity of the stimuli results in episodic symptoms of wheeze, shortness of breath, chastisedness and cough that vary over time and intensity and the most pathognomonic factor is the variable expiratory airflow limitation that is reversible either spontaneously or through medications. But again remember as asthma progresses and you do not treat it adequately it might become persistent. So that is the definition very important if you understand the definition you will be able to understand the entire pathophysiology and how do you treat it and why should we treat asthma. So if you see a patient with asthma with the time progression if you say this is the time and this axis is the symptoms if you say this is the symptoms axis or the breathlessness axis if you say if you take a patient with asthma we will have an episode of breathlessness where the breathlessness increases. So if you say this is the grade of the dyspnea from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so the grade of dyspnea. So the patient can have an acute severe breathlessness which goes up to there but then it comes back to normal it comes back to baseline and then there is an episode gap totally normal and then we have one more episode where the breathlessness is much higher and then again the patient comes to normal in between the episodes the patient is usually normal. So this is what uh, is classically happening in asthma. So you have episodes and in between the episode if you see there is no breathlessness at all. In contrast if you see a COPD patient, a COPD or a chronic bronchitis patient initially in the disease they may not have breathlessness at all but as the disease progresses they will have breathlessness 
and this breathlessness will increase with the episodes it might go up and it never returns back to baseline so it is never returning back to baseline it keeps increasing they may have these episodes but the baseline breathlessness will never be zero it will always be grade 1 or 2 and with every episode that is going to increase and they may have a continuous breathlessness that's happening so if you see a patient with copd the grade the baseline breathlessness is always there so there is no periods of no breathlessness so this is what is the main difference between asthma and copd so copd there is episodes but in between the episode the patient is not normal it never returns to normal in contrast in asthma the baseline is returned back between the episodes but if it is not treated well asthma is not treated well in between the episodes also the patient might have symptoms and finally it goes into a state of a persistent or a bronchitis like feature it might go future coming on to the classification of asthma so asthma is classified into bay disease categories so basically based on where is the source of antigen that is there so you have the allergic asthma that's by far the most common type of asthma we see in young patients the early onset allergic or extrinsic asthma where there is a lot of uh, stimulus which is coming from out then you have the late onset asthma or the uh, which is called as a non allergic asthma or intrinsic asthma or the late onset asthma based on the trigger that is there it could be seasonal asthma it could be exercise induced asthma drug induced asthma occupational asthma in smokers you get something called as an asthmatic bronchitis and you have something called as a cough variant asthma